Hi, today we're talking reflective practice. What is that, you ask? I know, it probably sounds like something hokey, but it's not. It is a way to improve ourselves and our learning. And if you're a teacher, it's a tool you can use in your classroom with your students to increase their learning and improve motivation. But before we get to how you can use it, let's quickly chat about what it is and where it came from. The term reflective practice comes from the works of John Dewey, who famously said, we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. Donald Shun broke it down into stages of reflection. From tacit knowledge to reflection on action, he looked at how we learn from experience. Basically, reflective practice is how we look at what we have done or wish to do and ask ourselves what could have been improved or what do we need to do to deepen our understanding or improve our action. As teachers, we can use this both for our own professional development and also for the development of our students. So how can we implement reflection into our teaching? Reflective journaling, aka learning logs, can be implemented in many ways. Handwritten journals, typed essays, blogs, even video journals are some examples of how reflection can be recorded and submitted by your students. An important part to this, though, is you. As an instructor, you must first create an outline of what you want reflective journaling to look like. What questions would you like your students to answer? Do you expect additional research? Will you use leading sentences? How will you grade their reflection? These are questions you first need to answer. And perhaps what you choose as a reflection project in the beginning of a course will be vastly different from the middle or the end. Because as your students become more adept at reflection, your expectations of their level and ability to reflect will evolve. My number one reason for implementing reflection into classroom practice is to increase or maintain my students' internal motivation for learning and completing their course. This practice will touch on the affective domain of learning along with the cognitive because it asks the student to delve deeper into what they are learning or experiencing. It makes an emotional connection with them that increases the value they feel for your course. It is a great way to decrease those midterm humdrums that we see many of our students express. Seem less hokey now? I hope so. Thank you for tuning in. I'd love to hear your comments on reflective practice, so don't be afraid to share them in the comments section of this video.